Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Psalms 34 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Um, I'm kind of peaceful where I'm at right now, so I guess I am pursuing it. Uh, contentment, I guess, is another word for it, as I'm really, I'm okay right now. I'm doing good. I, I'm loving the new job. So we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Off the hook, I don't have anything. Um, just going to kind of update you. I haven't had a whole lot of time to crochet. I have been working on... No, I have not been working on this one. Um, this one is pretty much exactly where I left it. So it's getting there. Um... I have to finish that one round and then I start with the open parts. And I think I told you that last week. So that one hasn't really, if I've done anything, it might be a few, um, what do you call it? Uh, stitches, but nothing to say the least. Um, now I'll show you why here in just a few minutes. Um, this one, Again, I have one square, and it, it is still waiting on the white side here. Oops, showing you backwards. So this is a Round the World inspired one, um, and it actually goes like this. So it's, it is what it is. Not a whole lot of progress on those to show you. But on the... Purpley one, I was doing it Tunisian and it was coming out too heavy and I need some things for work, um, some little shrugs. And so I came up with a different plan and this is what I've come up with. So this is going to be a shrug. I started with that. These are actually pretty pinks and purples. Um, I don't know that you can see it. This purple is a little bit of a gray purple. Um, this one is a mauve color at the bottom. And then there's a light pink in between them. And I'm going to do three sections with three darker sections with the light in between. Here is the yarn for the other dark and it's that purple one. And yes, I frogged the Tunisian one to get it. This is and that is dark purple. I don't know. It's almost an eggplant color. So I'm in the kitchen because it is early in the morning. And yeah, it's gone from being 100 degrees outside to rainy and nice, like 60. And then for the in-between part, I have this light pink that, of course, is going in between there. So in between each color there's a light pink and uh, I have a gray but I don't think I'm going to use it. I think I, I'm going to stick to the light. Pink. Um, it's almost really pale but so when this gets done I still have probably I don't know this will probably do maybe a row um, maybe two but this is all v-stitch and then when I get done, I'm just going to fold it in half and tack the edges. And it will be just an open shrug. Go around my, my shoulders. My arms will come out each end. And it'll be super simple, super cute. Um, sometimes some of the easiest things don't need to be overthought. And I was overthinking the shrug. Um, this one is more open, lighter, airier. And that's definitely what I want. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do those three. And if I need it longer, once I get done with this um, for my arms, then I will use that gray. So, just saying. But it'll have colors and it'll be fine. But I did frog the other one and uh, start over. So, just saying. 
Um, but that's really all the crochet I have. I do have a couple other things to let you guys know. Um, so don't have anything in the dye pots, nothing um, off the hook to show you per se. Here, um, nothing on the wheel in the fields of garden. So everything's doing great in the garden except for my tomatoes. And last week I went and got some seven dust, and the bugs are still eating up. The tomatoes just look pale. The plants themselves. So I am. I, I don't know if I've talked to you about these before, but and I don't know if anybody knows who Jerry Baker is. Uh, Jerry Baker is a master gardener, and I don't know if he used to be on TV. I don't know where I found him, but he has these books, and I have three of his books. Um, this is the Book of Garden Secrets, and what I like about Jerry Baker's thing, and this is, let me pull it back here. This isn't going on. Yeah, it is. Okay, so in the back, and he tells you how to use all of these. He's got tonics. Um, is what he calls them, uh, like dead bug brew. Um, he's got a half a cup of dead insects, one tablespoon of liquid dish soap, one tablespoon of cayenne pepper, and two cups of water. Put all ingredients in an old blender, and he says, and I mean really old, and puree the heck out of them. Uh, strain out pulp. In a cheesecloth, dilute the remaining brew to one fourth of a cup to a cup of water, and apply in a handheld mister sprayer to flowers, vegetables, and shrubs to the point of runoff. All of his stuff is done with things that most people have in their um, kitchen. So the next one I got from him was, and these I've had a long time, so I got that one first, and then I got Backyard Problem Solver, and then I got Flower Power, and his books, you can see, they're just like a cluster of different tips and um, different things you can do. The this one has other tonics, tonic, like how to put your garden to bed. Um, grass clipping dissolving tonic. Okay, it's got a can of beer, a can of regular cola, a cup of ammonia, and a cup of liquid dish soap. Mix all ingredients in a bucket and pour them into your 20-gallon sprayer and apply to your yard to the point of runoff. It really speeds up the decomposition process for any clippings left littering your yard. So there's all kinds of these, he calls them time, I call them recipes on how to um, deal with different stuff. Uh, there's green up tonics, there's ant control, there's uh, Baking soda spray, balanced plant food, uh, aphid, all-purpose bug and thug spray, all-purpose pest prevention, um, all-purpose varmint repellent, and it says two eggs, and, and his grandma is where he got a lot of these, and her name was Grandma Putt, and... It says, Grandma Putt swore by this stuff for getting rid of just about any kind of unwelcome critter that came down the pipe. It still works like a charm for me. And then he gives the recipe, and you pretty much just, you know, use it wherever you have things like rabbits or deer or, or mice or moles or whatever coming down, you know, to eat your, your food. So... There is all kinds of stuff in these books, and I love his because it's stuff I always have in the kitchen. He does have one tonic that uh, he talks about tobacco tea. Um, it There's a ton of stuff. So I am using these books to um, save my 
tomatoes. And uh, I have another bug bite. I have been getting bug bitten everywhere. So I've got to get the bugs out of the yard um, and out of the garden because it is driving me crazy. So I am working on the garden. Everything looks great. We've got some producing. The only thing I don't like is my zucchini squash is being eaten right off the vine. Again, I've got to get, I don't know what's getting to it. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to use those books to see how I can control the bugs and the critters from getting my garden. And we'll see how it goes. And I'll let you know which ones I use and which ones work and which ones didn't help me. So, yeah. Along that line, I did um, make my blackberry cobbler. Super easy recipe. And I just have to tell you. So, I took my blackberries and I had managed to get about two cups. Um, now... The recipe that I used said to use four cups, but I just cut everything in half because basically I put some lemon juice. I put the berries in the bottom, put a little lemon juice, about a tablespoon over them, um, not even a full tablespoon. And then I took equal parts sugar and flour. So I used about a half cup. And um, remember, I'm making a small one just for roommate and me. And um, this did a small uh, loaf pan, you know, bread loaf pan. So I put my two cups of berries down in there. I had washed them, you know, put some lemon juice in there. Uh, and then I took equal parts flour and sugar, added an egg, whipped that baby up, put it, just kind of crumbled it across the top. Didn't make like a, I'm sure you could make it look great, but I wanted everything to bubble up through it. So I just kind of Crumbled it, smushed it with my fingers and dropped it, you know, made sure everything was covered, but I didn't want it all one crust. Um, I didn't roll it out or anything. I just crumbled it kind of on there. There was a couple of big spots and I just kind of mushed it and flopped it on there. Um, and then I melted some butter and just brushed it on. And I put it in the oven and cooked it for about... 30, 35, maybe 45 minutes till golden brown and bubbly. I mean, you just know with a cobbler when it's done. Uh, so I made that and it was great. <laughs> I did go and do some exploring down along some other fence lines. And I found some other blackberry bushes, but they weren't producing um, big berries. They were little bitty sour ones. They were ripening, but... They just didn't have the water. The one blackberry bush is right by the pond where the ducks are. And so they were doing a little bit better. But anyway, I did get two cups out of them. I haven't really. I, I picked some last night, but I think I'm just going to have those on ice cream. You know, just berries and ice cream. So, and when we had the cobbler roommate, roommate's contribution was ice cream. So roommate Fred just vanilla ice cream and we put a scoop of ice cream on our hot blackberry cobbler and oh my word it was good so I love it it was a super simple easy recipe um nothing fancy but it was delicious so I was happy with that um RJ has been having the time of it right now uh so Somebody broke into his trucks at the farm. Um, one is my truck and one is his truck. And they stole some things. Later in the week, it looks like they caught the guy. And um, I think he got most of the stuff back. Or actually, he hasn't been to the sheriff's department. He got notified that they'd done his stuff. So... One of the things was my big reader to read the codes on the truck to tell us what's wrong with it. And that's about $500. And we leave it in the truck because if the truck breaks down, it's not going to do us any good to be at the farm. So we had it in the console. That was taken. Um, the truck keys were taken. RJ had pulled up and he'd gotten in late. He took the horse out to the barn. And this happened. He didn't get in until 
almost 11 and his father got up to go to work at 1.30 and the trucks had been broken into. So, um, yeah, he's now making sure he takes the keys in with him. And there were some other things stolen and it looks like he's going to get most of that stuff back. So we're hoping. Um, but yeah, that happened. He's been doing some rodeoing. I know he won last weekend on Sunday, I think he was winning. He came down here. He, uh, <laughs> he pulled the ripcord off of the lawnmower and he thought that's why, um, somebody stole it because the grass was getting long and it looked like, you know, nobody lived there or whatever. Uh, so he came down here and him and I got the thing put, I've done it one other time. It takes us forever. I know there's mechanics out there that can do it like that. I can't just say I can't. So took us a little bit, um, came in, had him lunch, uh, got the lawnmower fixed. And then he was going home to mow a little bit before he got off to his rodeo. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, on the job front or in the farmhouse, I guess you'd say I am loving my job. It is so stress free. There's no screaming, no yelling. Um, I mean, you've got customers that get upset, but it's fine. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I am enjoying it. Uh, I have one more thing to get switched over from insurance old job to new job and I'm going to take care of that. They don't open. That's what that alarm was is they open in 30 minutes and I'm going to be dressed, ready to go to work. And then I can work on getting that done. I don't know how long it'll take me on the phone to get that switched over. And it's, um, my 401k. So it's the last thing I have to get switched over. And then I think I'm ready for life, <laughs> not for life, just regular everyday life. But, uh, yeah, I'm actually enjoying it. Um, uh, I get to dress up a little bit. I wear makeup every day, not excessive. I just do my eyes and my lips. I put on some lipstick and I just do my eyes and that's it. So it makes me feel pretty. <laughs> um, <coughs> but I get dress a little bit pro more professional. I have been looking for some slacks. I'm not much of a dress girl, as you guys know. Um, I have a dress, a little black dress. That's all I have. Um, oh, and I have two black skirts. That's it. And, and mostly I had used those for funerals or Christmas. All of them had been used for funerals or Christmas. And so I'm still looking for, um, I've got to get some pantyhose and those are getting harder to find. And then, uh, yeah, I think my, my, tops are okay. I've got about 10 so I can rotate through those. Um, and then I've got to find some more pants. I've got two pair of black pants that I'm going back and forth through. And I also need to find some different shoes. Um, I only have one pair of black. They're wedges. They're really cute, but I need to get a couple more pairs to vary it up. And I probably need to get some lighter colored ones. But right now I'm wearing colorful tops, black slacks, and black shoes. <laughs> so it will come in time. Um, anytime that you start, you know, and before, for the last, what, three years, I have done, worked in jeans and t-shirts and then scrubs. So yeah, it is what it is. But there you go. That's how it's going at my job. But I am loving it. Um, I think I'm catching on quick enough. I, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping they've given me, their goal is to have me in three months doing my job that, you know, everything I need to do. At this point, I am comfortable using my book and doing it except for one thing. And I'm going to get with my trainer today and write down the steps. So, um, yeah, if I write them down my way, uh, 
I do pretty good. I've got a little notebook. It's got post-its of everything, and I just flip to what I need. I've got it tabbed and just do it. And so, yeah, I'm still using the book. At some point, I'll get to where I don't need the book, but I can accomplish my job. So, and I went through two weeks of training first. This is my first week on my own. This is just Tuesday. So, um, and the two weeks of training, uh, Thursday and Friday, I was pretty much on my own with a few exceptions. I had to go and get some help on a couple of things. But other than that, I'm good. I'm not good, but you know what I mean. I'm doing okay. Let's put it that way. So, all right, the ducks are doing great down at the pond. They're staying where they're supposed to be staying. So, you know, they're. I go down every evening and feed them some corn just because that's me. <laughs> but pretty much, I'm just settling into a routine, getting things done. The one thing that I do like about my newer job, my new job, is the fact that I get an hour and 15 minutes for lunch every day. Um, so I get to come home and see the dogs and, and that, and then they don't want you getting any overtime. So 40 hours, if I have any, like on Thursday, I might have a super long lunch. If I've get picked up a few minutes here or there to knock those out. So that's good. I like that, but yeah, I think it's going great. I, I don't know what my boss thinks, but I think it's going good. But yeah, so anyway, that really is all I have for this week. Um, Frogged One Project started a new one. Should have it done. The weather is rainy and cool, which is nice. I really kind of like it when it's cooler. I like fall and spring weather. I like fall the best, but spring, of course, when it starts to... It used to be the babies in spring that I love so much, but... By winter's end, I'm enjoying spring because of the weather. And then the fall, uh, that's my favorite time of year, I guess. Um, I prefer it now that we don't have the farm, we don't have the babies. And, you know, uh, well, we have the farm, but it's a horse training facility. That's what RJ does. That's how he's making his living. I get that, but I sure do miss those babies in the spring. Anyway. All right, I'm going to get off here. You guys have an amazing week and just know that you're in my prayers and my thoughts and I hope your life is going as well as can be expected or, you know, kind of like mine, just leveling out. So no terribles, no um, super highs, just, just a nice, even enjoying life kind of feeling. So you guys have a great week and I will talk to you next time. Bye.